Welcome to Squid Shot Photo Editing. I've put together a beginner-friendly toolkit using basic tools to bring out the best in your photo without spending a ton of time or getting caught up in making art of your photo. So if you're looking to get clean, vibrant photo edits with the least amount of steps possible, stick around. While this three-step process will let you edit that stack of photos way faster, it also happens to be the first stage in my photo editing process. It's become so routine to do these steps because it saves me so much time. I thought I'd share this approach and maybe, just maybe, it'll help your workflow as well. We're using the following tools today. Clarity, contrast, and vibrancy. If you're using Corel Paint Shop Pro, you can just follow along with us. If not, you can pause here, take a moment, and locate these tools in your editing platform. Links to Corel products are below. Assuming you've done any recompositioning you'd like to do to the photo, we can go ahead and get started. Any photo will do, guys. So just grab one and throw it in the editor. First thing we're gonna do is duplicate what we work with. If you know me, it's always the first thing I do. And the bottom one, we're gonna rename it as Untouched. And the next one, we're going to rename it Clarity. And you guessed it, we're gonna put the Clarity tool on here. And that's in Adjust, come down to Brightness Contrast, and it's Fill Light Clarity for Paint Shop Pro. And you see that it automatically had an effect on the picture. It's because it applied the last setting we had it to. I always reset it to default, which is everything set to zero. I always start with zero for most of my tools. So that way I'm applying the tool to the picture specifically. Okay, now that we've scrolled in here, we can really pay attention to these areas. So we're gonna go and grab the clarity tool. I'm gonna slide it up a bit. Wait for it. And it may look like not a lot is happening, but if we A and B, you can see it kind of takes away that haziness to all this area in here. And you need to decide how much you want to use. Once again, be a little careful with this because overusing it uh, can make it look strange. And what I mean by that is like, it's a little high right here at 47. Let's go and look at the whole image and it looks okay, but that looks more natural. This looks a little unnatural. And we can accentuate it even further so you can understand even what it will do. It looks really crisp and clear, but almost too crisp and clear. Wrongly crisp and clear. And that's subjective, obviously. You might look at that and be like, that's exactly what I wanted. Whereas I usually try to stay a little shy of that. Bring some of this area back. And we can A, B this. And you can see that it still has a bit of an effect. It made the deeps a bit deeper, these brights a bit brighter, really cuts this line, separating the subject from the background. Let's go ahead and hit OK. It's nice. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate this by right-clicking and duplicating. You guessed it, we're gonna rename this copy of Clarity to Contrast. And we're going to definitely drop the contrast tool on top. Reset it to default. I use the contrast tool to clean the air. There's always this like light white sheen on top of any picture I ever see. And this just kind of removes that. So let's go ahead and click the contrast up a couple of notches and you'll see what I mean. A, B it. 
fancy, you didn't even notice anything was happening until I took it away. And then you're like, wow, where did that white haze come from? And we take it away. Now, you can leave it this simple or you can take it to more extremes, but today we're just trying to clean up an image and make it pretty. So let's leave it there. And if you feel like the whole image is a little too dark, and you can always check that by scooting way back and making the image really teeny on the screen. Does it still pop? And if so, you're good. If not, you can make it a little brighter. So like from far away, I'll make it a bit brighter so you can see what I mean. Yeah, see, if you want it to be bright, you can. I like my images dark. So we're gonna leave it at zero. Oh, even a one's fine. I'll pull it up by one degree. And we're gonna hit okay. Let's zoom back in here so we can see what we doing. And at this point, we can A, B backwards to the clarity layer. And you always wanna make sure that your image is always getting better with each stage you do. So let's look back one stage and see if we like what we've done here. I like it better. We can even go back one more stage by turning the clarity layers visibility off and seeing it from the original. And I think it's better with a little bit of clarity and that drop of contrast. Okay, it's very simple, it's very subtle, but that's all we're after with this shot. And yes, we're going to right click the contrast layer and duplicate it. And we're going to rename this copy of the contrast layer to Vibrancy. Let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of all of the pictures underneath so that way it's easier on the computer. It doesn't have to hold on to all that information at the moment. Okay. And you guessed it, we're going to use the Vibrancy tool on this. So let's go to Adjust, down to Hue Saturation, and over to Vibrancy. And obviously it automatically applies the last settings it had. So let's turn that off. All right, let's be careful with this tool. It can start to mess with your brain because your eyes start to think, oh, that looks great even though it's way too colorful. Let's go up a couple of clicks until we see a color bump, just a small one. And then we're gonna stop. Moving two at a time. And I haven't noticed a color bump, but let's A, B and make sure that our eyes and our brain aren't fooling us here. It has a slight, slight. So let's do a little more. Go up by four and A, B it. There we go. Now you can see this effect happening in the upper quadrant here when I A, B it. And you need to ask yourself, do you like that? Do you like there being that much of a color change to the overall image? And if you would like, you can go all the way full tilt to 100 just to see what's going on and move it way back at kind of a sliding action just to see what happens. We're gonna look at this number 14. Let's go to 100. It's gonna go boom. And you see how there's so much loss to some of the parts of the picture. And what if we slide back? And as we slide back little bit by little bit, you can see the colors coming back and this oversaturation kind of going away. Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't use saturation tools in the basic edit. I use that for the more artful edits when I'm after a certain stylized look. Uh, but when I'm just trying to clean up a photo, I use vibrancy and I'm very uh, restricted with it. I'm very stingy. Now let's AB back to the untouched picture so we can see the end result with where we started. Here we go. Wow. I like our new rendition way better. It's not supposed to be dramatic. It's not supposed to be some artful thing. It's just supposed to be better. And something we can do very, very fast. 
Okay, you can export that photo and move on to the next. We're gonna drop this picture of a guy going fishing. Once you get the flow down, it'll only take you a few minutes to do each picture. Duplicate. Rename. Clarity. Now. Just a little bit clearer. It's fine. Hit OK. Adjustment, brightness, contrast. And we're going to do the contrast. Back to default. You slide that contrast up there. See how it starts to look weird? Let's go ahead and pull it right back down. Let's A, B it. Start to lose the detail in his backpack, so let's pull it back down a couple more ticks. There we go, those lines start to come back. And now there's more definition between the sky, the water, the wave, and the water again in the sand. So watch that area. Way more definition between the, them, so let's bake that in. Go back to adjustments. And we're gonna go to the hue saturation, vibrancy, and default. There we go. And we're just gonna pull it up a little bit. Maybe a little more. Might be too much. See what's happening in here? Let's look. Yeah, too much. So we're gonna start to get some of that detail back. Nice and bright, without losing the details. So those three steps are done, and I don't think that took more than a couple of minutes. Let's A, B it to the original untouched. And I think our new rendition is way better, and that's all we're after here. Editors can be chocked full of effects, tools, plugins, but once the thrill of having trillions of combinations to play with has worn off, having a procedure to quickly edit your photos is invaluable to your time. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments below, or if there's any other photo topics you'd like me to talk about. In the interim, remember to unniche yourself. Do more. Give it a shot. A squid shot. <laughs>